Like any good sci-fi universe, Star Wars has its fair share of hive-minded insectoid species. There are, of course, the more famous Killicks of Alderaan, but this video isn't about them and their distressing joiner rituals. We'll save that for another video. Today, we'll be taking a look at the Verpine of Roche, an insectoid species that managed to break some of the creepier stereotypes to become some of the finest starship engineers in the galaxy. Attention, Sergeant on deck! In a twisted sense, the Verpine resembled a B-1 battle droid in silhouette. They were tall and slender, standing at 1.9 meters and weighing in at 60 kilos. Unlike other insectoids, like the Kibnon, they had two arms and two legs, although in some cases, Verpine were known to grow vestigial wings. Their long face was taken up mostly by two large compound eyes, behind each of which extended a thin antenna. Instead of skin, they had an exoskeleton composed of a green shitness compound they called carahide. This made their carapaces as flexible as skin, yet simultaneously hard as armor. They also lacked a heart, in the literal, not the metaphorical sense. Verpine eyes and antennae were incredibly sensitive enough so to pick up microscopic details and sounds. Their antennae, in particular, could produce, pick up, and interpret radio waves. This meant that, regardless of distance, one verpine could send out a message and have it instantly understood by all the verpine around them. This instant communication was often mistaken for telepathy, but it wasn't a hive mentality. It did, however, lead them to setting up their hives as a consensus democracy, with all Verpine having an instant voice on hive matters. There were two kinds of Verpine. The first were worker drones, which were unintelligent and intended for hard labor. The second were the intelligent, hermaphroditic Verpine who ran their society. When they first joined the galactic community, Almost 95% of their hive was made up of worker drones. Integrating into the galactic society, however, meant a huge increase in demand for their technological goods, meaning more intelligent verpine were needed. Over time, the breeding verpine used a special enzyme to ensure all larvae were intelligent and any drones needed were produced for the hive via cloning. Verpine reproduction was fairly standard for insectoids. Some laid eggs and others fertilized them. These eggs were kept in colony incubators and cared for by everyone. But what was fascinating about the Verpine wasn't their sibilant language or radio communication. It was the machines they built, from starships to shatter guns and shields. Some said they were the best engineers in the galaxy and in many ways, they were right. Now. While they are famous for living in the Roche asteroid belt, the Verpine weren't initially from the system. The Roche system was made up of a number of asteroids, many of which had been rendered uninhabitable. But they hadn't always been so. Before the time of the Old Republic, the Verpine had colonized the system and used their technological prowess to rig self-sustaining environments on these rocks. According to some theories, these asteroids once made up the OG Verpine homeworld before Calamity struck it, while others theorized the Verpine had been nomads who had finally settled down. If you ask the Verpine themselves, they claimed they didn't know of their homeworld. For millennia after they colonized the system, the Verpine lived in peace, using their skills to produce fantastical technological innovations. For example, after the Weimancy Storm in 7811 BBY, which was a conflict between the Republic and the signatories of Weymancy, the Verpine used Weymancy weapons as a template to develop the squint pipe process. This was a weapon system the Republic adopted, and for the next 300 years, this rapid-firing turbolaser weapon was superior to any deflector shield in existence. That was until the same principle was used to strengthen shields around 7500 BBY, bringing the two back on even footing. At the time of the Jedi Civil War, the Verpine had become part of the galactic community and crafted many other weapons, such as ion blasters and cardio regulators. 
These designs weren't without controversy, however. There were rumors that the Verpine tested their weapons out against live sentience. But as good as Verpine weapons were, it wasn't what they were most known for, no. That would be their exceptionally engineered starships. Because they had to constantly maneuver around the asteroid belt, Verpine were very good at constructing solid ships. For example, Slane and Corpil, a Verpine firm, were the ones behind the V-19 Torrent Starfighter and the B-Wing. Due to their success in weaponsmithing and shipbuilding, they eventually branched out into droid manufacturing. This, it turns out, was their least profitable overture. Sometime before the Clone Wars, the Verpine founded a company known as Roche Hive Mechanical Apparatus Design and Construction Activity for those who need the Hive's machines. This was a bit of a mouthful to most, so the company's name was shortened to just Roche. Compared to other droid manufacturers, Roche was a small fry. Their first droid, the J9 Worker Drone, was famously unpopular. In short, it was too insectoid, making odd buzzing noises and using vocabulary most mammalian sentients found weird and off-putting, like royal jelly. Realizing their critical error, Roche employed human engineers to make their droids more comfortable for human use, and later designs, such as the 8D Smelter Droid and the SIAC series Protocol Droid, were far more successful. Despite these adaptations, Roche was never a true competitor in the droid market. Other companies far outshined their products, which meant that most of their products were distributed within the Roche system itself. For much of their history, the Verpine were allied with the Galactic Republic. After it fell, however, they remained neutral. Despite being sympathetic toward the rebels, they avoided openly allying with them due to the presence of Imperial advisors in their sector. They did, however, design the B-Wing Starfighters for the Rebel Alliance. Once the New Republic was founded, they once again established a tight alliance with them. The early ABY years didn't go very smoothly for the Verpine, however. Around 8 ABY, they had to break a series of shipwriting contracts with the Barabels. According to the Verpine, a mad hive mother had taken control of the ships, and since they had built them, they weren't obligated by contract to regain control of them and hand them over. The Barabels, as you can imagine, weren't happy with this and began negotiations with Kubaz chefs. They were offering Verpine body parts for the Kubaz, who were insectivores, to cook with, which the New Republic was also not super happy with. Leia Organa Solo was first sent to mediate the conflict, but it escalated to the point where Mon Mothma herself had to step in. In 36 ABY, the Swarm War broke out in the Outer Rim. This was a conflict between the Chiss Ascendancy, which was supported by the Jedi Order and the Galactic Republic, and the Killic Hive. During the conflict, most Verpine remained neutral, as befit their pacifistic nature, but some, who were addicted to the Killic Gorog Nest's Black Ambrosia, took the side of the Hive species. These outliers smuggled B-Wings and Verpine Shatter Guns to the Killics, only to be rewarded by the insects and their joiner recruits trying to invade the Verpine capital of Nickel One. Thankfully, the attempted invasion was avoided thanks to the actions of the Skywalker family. During the Second Galactic Civil War, they had a disagreement with Mercana over breaking non-competition and patent abuse laws. They also signed a treaty with the Mandalorians, fearing another invasion. The terms were straightforward. Mandalorians wouldn't invade and would instead supply military aid and the Verpine would arm them. When Imperial Remnant forces invaded the Roche systems, the Mandalorians honored the treaty and helped repel the invaders. This frightening experience only made the Verpine more determined than ever. Following the attacks, they finally branched out into offensive droid designs, inventing the IX-6 heavy combat droid. When Darth Krait established his galactic empire in 130 ABY, they were ordered to cease all IX-6 production and destroy their existing stock, but the Verpine refused. Instead, they spread their factories out throughout the system, resisting an empire for the first time. In retaliation, 
crate sent several Star Destroyers to blast several heavily populated asteroids to smithereens, killing untold numbers of Verpine. But the survivors stood strong, proving conclusively that you don't need a heart to show courage. So that was our take on the Verpine, perhaps Star Wars's friendliest insectoid species. But what do you think? Are you looking forward to a future video on the Killix? Let us know of any other alien species you'd like to see us cover. As always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.